you're here, that means you received an email or you were told that there would be an information session about uh, Hive One and how it's coming in once a quarter. And so I'm hoping to answer some questions for you and make sure you get started off the right foot. And if you're watching it online, the same story goes for you. You probably received an email and got some information about this. So, Hire One's a company that's been around for over a decade, um, providing back end uh, financial aid and business office services for financial aid recipients across the country. I think there's over 1,100 schools nationwide that are, that are Hire One schools now. And so, we're about halfway through the system. There's about uh, 12 schools in the Washington State Community College system that have Hire One, and we're right around that, that 12 spot in, in line to kind of make that transition. Uh, so, a couple of few of the reasons why we did it is obviously there's some administrative cost savings, but the, the focus really was to provide some, some options for students, some quicker options for students, and um, um, you know get with the 21st century as far as funds and uh, disbursements. Um, so, like I said, um, it provides more more options, faster refund delivery. So, if you go with the the one card, you have your funds the same day. The I press press the button on the computer it says enter to dispense the funds. You'll have it that day, our first drive around, we did a sample uh, already. It took 12 minutes from the time to time I hit in terms of the time the funds are available in your account. Uh, there's multiple options, there's three options you're able to have it, like I said, through this one card, which is a debit card, MasterCard, brain, uh, debit card, um, a check, still do a check like we've always done, and you have uh, the funds electronically deposited into your checking or savings account. This is what we came up for the card. This is what it's going to look like. So starting the uh, beginning of, of uh, December, they go out uh, December 7th, I believe. Uh, this is the envelope that you're going to get in the mail. Do not throw it away. This is, has all the information about your, your refund. You have your login information, the, the website you need to go to to enter through that information. Start setting up the, your security codes and passwords and that sort of thing. It's going to be a bright green envelope. I have one here. This is the, uh, the bright green envelope you'll get in the mail. Like I said, don't throw it away. And in the top left, you see the card. Uh, we have visions of, of having some photo ID on this card in the future. Hopefully that is early spring or maybe next fall. But this is the card you're going to get in the mail. So, like I said, you have three options. You have refund disbursements, or we call refunds. Uh, the same day deposit to higher educate to uh, to higher one checking account. That's one option. Deposit to a domestic bank account. So if you have a U.S. Best Bank, Bank of America, uh, Hapo, you can have it electronically deposited in that account as well. And of course, you can sell a paper check, which we have an example of that too. Same old check that that uh, you're probably used to. The only difference is it's coming from higher one. It's pretty nondescript, so pay attention. Don't throw this one out either. So this is what's gonna. What it'll look like. Can't see it. You, you bring that down just a little bit, Brett. Yeah. There you go. So, again, so if you choose the check option for your Hire One refund, this is what it would be like. And you'll get a confirmation email all along the way. All of us in the room, uh, with the exception of Kyle here, are uh, test piloting the, the system. So some of us have tried the direct deposits, the check, and the, um, the, the one card. Uh, you're notified all along the way. I get a nod of confirmation in the back row. Um, so some of the benefits, some of the things that we saw that were kind of neat, is that you have free online banking and real-time account activity just like you would with any other checking or savings account. Uh, free online bill pay, hire one ATMs on campus. So we'll have a, a big green hire one ATM on upstairs in that little nook next to the, ca the cashier's office. And um, the way that will work is that it will be stocked, jam-packed full of money at the beginning of the quarter, and you'll be able to pull out $500 cash per day until you're exhausted your refund. One of the neat things I thought would be of, of use uh, when I saw this was college students is peer-to-peer -peer sharing. So you're going to be able to, say you, you owe your buddy a rent check, he's the one who pays this to the landlord, you're going to be able to take your higher one account, transfer the, your amount of rent over to that individual, and they can pay the rent check if that's that's how it goes. Um, the other option is your family members who are maybe sending you money to help support your, your college also be able to do that as well. Um, some other fancy pants things, you've got text to balance, you're able to get your text balance on the fly with your smartphone. Um, 
using load balance alerts and hand refund not notifications, like I said earlier. So the number one thing, everyone at home watching, number one message, swipe and sign. Uh, this, we discussed this earlier today. Even at uh, local merchants, they're going to uh, try to not necessarily persuade you, but they'll, you'll swipe your card to uh, process a transaction, and they'll say, enter your pen. Don't get caught. That's where the fees come in. So this isn't, it's not all uh, sugar plums and, and fairies. There are fees just like there are with other checking and savings accounts. If you overdraft, um, we'll talk about that in a little bit. Uh, if you're going to enter your PIN number, there's a 50 cent transaction fee for that. And in the handouts, I believe you saw all the, uh, the fees associated, potentially associated with the card. Uh, I want to make it very clear that you can go through the entire experience without a single fee whatsoever, even if you have the one card, as opposed to the other two options, which of course would really be fees associated with that. So swipe and sign and don't get persuaded to enter your PIN unless you absolutely have to. There are circumstances when that might happen. Um, we talked about the, the online bill pay. We talked about one account, one account. Okay, okay the fee schedule. <coughs> we have that in front of you, I hope. Discuss this a little bit. Let's focus instead of the free stuff. Let's focus on what you could get charged for. So you see there, are stop payment, return deposit items, various banking functions that there are fees associated with that you would find anywhere else. Um, the important one, the 50 cent pin transaction fee, uh, an overdraft fee. The, the nice part about the higher one card is there are some built-in um, stop gaps, if you will, to prevent you from doing an overdraft. Um, you, can, you will not be able to swipe your card and overdraft your account. The, the one scenario that we just discovered that you could get a, a transaction fee or an overdraft fee is if you were to have written check and that was in transit and then swiped your card, that would be a situation where you theoretically could get a fee associated with that account. Any questions so far, ma'am? Any fees that we need? Uh, we might want to highlight the actual kind of using just the cash machine provided rather than other ATMs. Right. So again, like we were talking about earlier, so you're able to use that green ATM, five hundred dollars a day. It'll be all stocked up, uh, and don't be confused with the ATM around the corner, which is a mainstream commercial ATM that has associated fees with it. Again. If you use the green ATM, no fees. If you were to use a uh, third party ATM one across the street to, uh, what's that, Apple Visa uh, across the street, the credit and were to use theirs, they would have their own banking fees, whatever that is, probably $1.50 for them, and um, the fees associated with using a third party uh, ATM that's not higher one. And what is that, $3.50? I think that's $3.50. So, just like with any other banking product, there's potentially fees associated with it. So the lesson is to use the ATM on campus and there's not a fee. There's not a fee. <laughs> what happens when the ATM on campus runs out of money? That's, that's a good question. There's probably going to be some hiccups with the launch because they don't know our market yet. But they're notified it's wireless, it's a wireless ATM, so it goes back to Higher One headquarters and they detect that it's out of money. They immediately get a, a, um, a truck on, on campus to restock that sucker full of money. Um, so they'll know before we know, and, and the, you know, soon that last person pulls that last $20 bill out, or I guess $10 bill out, um, it'll, it'll get refilled. So there might be some pick hiccups just as we watch as they measure our, our demand. If they do have, if the machine is out of money and you have to go, say, around the corner and use the other one, the higher one will reimburse right. you for the fee because they will already know that that machine is out of walk, out of money. Right. So save your receipt. Yep, save your receipt. Mm -hmm. If that ever happens, could they match up the time and you know, confirm that it was either down or out of money? 
So there's some quirky little fun things is that they're very technology oriented. You can access them in multiple ways and, and they're also very much pro um, financial literacy. On their own site they have like a finance 101 basic uh, financial management for, for consumers. So they're very uh, proactive to, uh, to market demand, or to student demands. If there's something else that you guys don't like, they're pretty responsive in fixing it or changing how, how their business model works to better serve students. It was started, the company was started by uh, college students. They thought there would be a better way to do business. And, um, and like I said, um, they've been around over a decade. I use them as a grad student, no fees whatsoever. Very positive experience for me. And I'm hoping for the same thing here. Um, so things, now bring it to you as a, as a, uh, as a student and you're, you haven't gotten your card or you're, you're trying to figure out what the process is. The number one thing we need to tell students is to make sure their address is correct. If the address isn't correct, that green envelope doesn't show up. If the green envelope doesn't show up, that's where delays will, will kick in. And we've tried to uh, push that. We're going to continue to push that as fast as possible and as, as wide as possible. Really make sure your address is correct. Check, check with the postal service, check it with us through uh, the, your kiosk, with, through um, Talk Central. Just make sure your address is up to date. Uh, Should they be putting that at their permanent address or their, their temporary <coughs> residence? Like say with their parents, if they live, if they're from Idaho, should they, they leave that one there, or if they're living six months in an apartment here, should they leave it with that one? Well, that's a that's a good question. Uh, I mean, the goal is to get that green envelope in your hands. If you trust your parents to to get that to you, have it sent to your permanent address. If it's um, if you want to get it fast and get it to that temporary address. It's a great question. I mean, are there are there additional so th the question with that is, are there additional documents that are going to come throughout a period of time? So if I get the green envelope, great. Mm -hmm. and I get the card and I'm all set. But if two two months down the line there's extra documents that are coming and I've still got that with a temporary residence or my permanent, then am I going to keep having to go back to Idaho to get these things? Sure. Am I waiting on things? There's a couple instances where you might get, so if you lose your card and you need a new card, it would go through the same process. Um, and if we do end up going to having this photo ID, we have an opportunity to, to change out that card for a, the picture ID version of the higher one card. Um, outside of that, their communication is electronic, so you're going to get that sent to that primary email address, mm -hmm. that notification of, of uh, funds available, notification um, um, of your student status, that will all be done electronically. That's a good question. There were some changes last week to the higher one card that I want to get on the front, front of now. There was, there's two things. They've, they've now branched out to jump, jump, not just the higher one card, they now have a three-tiered process. Um, as a student, you'd want to take a look at, at each of those options. So there's one, the, there's still the free one card for students, and then there's two other options. It's Premier and Edge, and we have the two, two options. And they uh, have, do have monthly fees associated, associated with them. Uh, it's probably not for most students, but in, in some rare instances, you might, that might be a good market for you. You'd have to look into that card and decide if that is right for you. Um, but again, the one card is still free. Now, the other thing that uh, came to light last week is, again, it's, the one card is free for students. If you cease being a student, it will no longer be fee free, and they check on that about every five months to determine whether or not you're a student. Um, I think that's a pretty straightforward uh, question. It's basically on your honor. Yeah, I guess I'm still a student. So. And what is the trans? So then they they transition you over, and then you're going to start accruing fees you, from yeah, that point. Yeah, you could uh, accrue fees. I think it's three ninety five a month. Three ninety five. Yeah. So if you cease to be a student, you need to. Or you can change your, before you leave campus, you can change your, your option to the check or uh, funds transfer. That would also probably get you out of that. Okay. This is just more of what we've kind of talked about. The different options that are available to you and how, uh, how you can use it and use it free, be free. That's it.
that's all we have. I'm, I'm open to questions. I hope you have.